Hey guys, welcome back to our tech booth. In this video, I'm gonna share with you five accessories that I've been really enjoying for my broadcast mix workstation. So I've been mixing in a box with Ableton for almost a year now, and especially over the past couple of months, I've been able to build this workstation here at South Fellowship Church. You saw my first video that covered kind of the, at least foundation of this system with computer, Ableton, the fader port, um, all of the other accessories I had specifically for this M1 Mac Mini. I'm pleased to report it's been working great. Base model M1 Mac Mini has been stable, has not crashed on us ever in the middle of the service or even not in the middle of the service. Everything has been working great. Also, we're using a ton of plugins. Um, so really pleased with this setup. And then you saw in another video we recently did, we moved this broadcast mix station back here. Now I have my multi-view with my two monitors. This is a big deal. As a broadcast mix person, just being able to see everything that's going on in the multi-view is really helpful so I can see you know, what's, what's going on in the computer, all the different cameras. Um, even though I can't actually see the stage from back here because I'm lower um, at this table, I can still see the whole room through the camera. So that's been an awesome upgrade. But in this specific video, I wanna share with you five more things that we've implemented with this workstation that if you're trying to improve your broadcast mixing experience and results, um, I'd highly recommend these accessories because they've been working out very, very well for us, both myself if I'm mixing, but then also as we're equipping our volunteers to mix. This video is brought to you by Broadcast Mix Mastery. It's our online course that shows you everything that I'm about to show you in this video, but in much, much greater depth because we go in depth of how to route audio to and from your mixing console, how to build your template, how to use all the fancy plugins, how to get the audio from Ableton to your video switcher and then to your live stream. So we cover it all there. Check out Broadcast Mix Mastery, link down below this video. Accessory tool number one that we implemented recently and have been getting great results with is the Clark Technic DN9630 AES50 to USB 2.0 converter. So I have this converter box is just underneath the table here and it goes USB into our M1 Mac and then you can see here it's got the Ethernet RJ45 uh, jack that actually goes um, to the mixing console, our wing. So you guys know I love using Dante but the Dante card still has not come yet. It's been released, it's been like almost three months and it still has not shipped yet. Who knows when that's actually going to arrive. So I wish I would have gotten one of these earlier on um, because it's a fantastic tool. It's been very reliable. What it allows for us to do is to send 48 channels of audio to and from the mixing console to the computer over the AES50 protocol. So the same protocol that we're using for our stage boxes, um, we're able to use to send audio for our broadcast mix. And since it runs over Cat5, you can send the signal, you know, multiple hundreds of feet without running into any connectivity issues. One of the things about the wing that's awesome is it actually has three AES50 ports on the back of it or three AES50 networks you can use. So we're currently using A and B, I think, for all of our um, sound reinforcement needs on the stage. And then AES50C, that network wasn't being used for anything, so I was able to just use that for our broadcast mix. And now what's cool is, is someday when we do get Dante capability, when we put a Dante card in the board, we'll actually kind of have a redundant system set up where um, maybe we'll use the, the Clark Technic adapter as our primary uh, interface to get audio into Ableton. And then if we need a backup, we'll have audio also coming over the Dante network. So I highly recommend this device if you're looking for that solution to be able to, you know, put your broadcast mixing station somewhere far away from your front of house mixing console. Because you don't really want to be running audio over USB more than probably five to 10 feet. Uh, USB cables, when they get really long, that can create some issues. And then you could get, we've been, we've been experimenting with a, a USB USB to Ethernet adapters. Um, we haven't really ran a full multi-track through it, um, but that could be a cheaper but probably less reliable option um, to solve that type of issue. So I would recommend either this AES50 to USB converter. It's $370. Unfortunately, looks like they're mostly out of stock. I bought mine um, from eBay. So I found one that someone had barely used on eBay. I, I paid probably about the price that it is new because it's a pretty hot product right now and, I, and now I understand why it is. Um, so it's great. You could even use this like 
maybe you want to have uh, your tracks and keyboard rig on stage, I don't see why you couldn't just use this as a you know, 48 channel audio interface basically to, to work with your um, AES50 enabled mixing consoles. And just to show you what this looks like in Ableton, um, here's my audio routing settings. So you can see I've got all of my inputs coming in. And what I like to do is I basically labeled the inputs in Ableton to match one-to-one -one with all of our stage box inputs. So you can see A1, A2, that's gonna be AES50 network A, input one, two, three, four, so on. I keep it all labeled. Um, and then down here, starting at channels 33, we have local inputs uh, one through eight. And then we have a few auxiliary inputs and then a few extra blank ones we're not using for anything. Um, and then I only enable the inputs that we're actually using on a given Sunday, even though everything is labeled. And then for the output, it's then going out of Ableton. The master output is going back to the mixing console. Um, and you can just see here, just outputs one and two on the AES50 adapter going into um, the AES50 network C into the wing. Then in the wing, that's where we do our digital to analog conversion to get the audio to the video switcher. Um, and then again, from the video switcher, that's where we're actually monitoring our audio that runs to our headphone amp right here. So works pretty well. I'm not a huge fan of the headphone amp setup. It's kind of got some noise going on um, in it that I'm gonna find a better solution for that someday of how we actually wanna monitor the stream. But right now it's, it's working pretty well for us. So that is the Clark Technic AES50 um, to USB 2.0 converter. Highly recommend that tool. Here's the next tool that we got. And this is a tool that we also got for our front of house mixing console um, as well for our talkback mic. So I actually didn't even have any talkback mic at all um, back in this station. Um, and that was a pain on a Sunday morning if I needed to tell the worship leader or a band member something I had no way of doing that other than just yelling at them and I don't like doing that. So I wanted to kind of upgrade our talk back mic setup. So we have one back here in the broadcast booth. If I need to tell someone like, hey, um, I'm getting a lot of noise from the, your instrument. And sometimes I, I'm, I'm able to hear things um, a bit quicker than our front of house mix engineer is just because you know I'm hearing everything through my headphones and I can just really hear what's going on with all the different instruments. Like this Sunday, I had to tell Aaron, our worship leader, like, hey, your guitar tone sounds horrible. Um, let's check your cables. And then eventually it ended up being a battery, his, his input or pickup battery was dying. So his tone sounded horrible. We got that fixed. Um, and that would have been nice for me to be able to just like tell them through talk back. So I like having a talk back, even if I'm doing broadcast mixing and I have a Shure SM57. I think for any talk back mic, just get a dynamic mic. It's going to be really isolated in it's pickup pattern. I think the Shure SM57 is great for that. And then this is a cool little tool. Um, this is my the accessory I want to highlight here, the OptiGate PB05. So it's a noise gate that only opens up uh, via infrared. So when I put my mouth up to the mic, the infrared red sensor is triggered and that opens the gate and then I can just start talking. So I can have a talkback mic where I don't have to worry about like holding a button or toggling a button. I can just go like here and I know they will, they will hear me and then I'll go back off. It's going to automatically mute this microphone. So then our band members, you know, they're not gonna hear our talk back bleeding through the system. So I actually saw this, I gotta give credit to the, the, the crew at the Belonging Church when we did a tech tour there. They have one of these for the, their MD microphone as well as for their mix engineers and front of house engineers. I think it's just a brilliant concept to have a noise gate that, that is reliant on infrared um, rather than actual noise because that can, that can result in a lot of accidental triggering if there's a bunch of noise bleeding through um, into the microphone. So the OptiGate, I think it's a great accessory to have specifically for your TalkBack mic setup. Up next, we have the Touchable Pro app. That's what I'm running on this iPad right here. And that is a accessory for controlling our Ableton broadcast template. So what's cool is you, I think you purchase the app in the app store for your iPad. It's like $15. And then you download the companion desktop app. And once you get the desktop app up and running, you plug the iPad into your computer or it also works over network. I like to use USB so it's more reliable. Um, plug your iPad into your computer it's automatically going to you know, sync with the computer and then you're gonna open up Ableton, add it as a MIDI input. And now I can actually go and I can control my Ableton template with this app here. So I'll, let me just switch these windows for you. Um, so here is, for example, 
my first track right here, the computer track. I can enable and disable it here with a touchable app and then you can see those changes happening. I can move faders. I actually like the feedback specifically on faders, the visual feedback you get here better than what Ableton provides. Um, and then what's also cool is when I'm playing audio back in Ableton Live, you can see the audio metering in the touchable app as well. Um, so you can configure this app however you want. Uh, I've got obviously the faders and volume down here or I can just enable or disable uh, channels by clicking on you know, the name of the channel. All the color coding of tracks matches up. Um, I've got my record enable buttons, solo buttons. Um, I've got obviously the mute buttons on top. Um, but what's cool is I can also actually look at my, my IO for the tracks as well. So pretty much everything you would see in Ableton, you can see within this touchable app. And after a few weeks of using this, I've been very impressed with the reliability. It's always stays connected. And again, I'm, I'm using um, USB most of the time, at least I think I am. I have both Wi-Fi and USB connected right now, so I'm not really actually sure which one it's using. Is it using both of them? But it says the connections are both okay. It's been great. As long as it's plugged in or it's connected over Wi-Fi, it doesn't ever like drop out on me. Um, and then I just, I, I just love the visual feedback and our volunteers have love that as well because that's probably one of the biggest weaknesses I think of Ableton Live now that I've been mixing for broadcasts a lot is that I wish they had a different uh, setup for their faders. These little triangle faders are just not very, they're just not very obvious like where they actually are at sometimes because sometimes what has happened is you know a fader's been all the way down at zero but it's just not really obvious uh, to, your, to your eye um, that it's all the way down there so then you're like oh this track is on why isn't why am I not hearing audio well, it's because the fader's all the way down to zero and the visual feedback isn't great within Ableton's UI. So if I were to change anything about the UI of Ableton, that's definitely one of the things I would, I would tweak. I think Logic and Pro Tools have better um, visual feedback with their faders. So that's the third tool that we've been using. I've loved it a ton is this touchable app. The fourth tool I want to highlight um, are my custom all clear in-ear monitors. So this was a huge upgrade for me. You guys probably saw a recent video I did. We stopped by All Claire, hung out with Johnny. He redid, he redid some uh, custom molds for me and then we ordered these Spire 6 driver headphones. They go for $849 here on All Claire's website. And I was actually pretty blown away by the difference from my RSM quad drivers to these headphones. I just feel like I hear more of the lows and I feel more, I can hear even more of the highs. Uh, the RSM quad drivers are great. Um, if you have the, the, the money, I would recommend these six drivers over those. Um, I wasn't able to, to, to tell the difference as much though when I was just trying them out um, with their universal fit um, Spire 6 driver headphones uh, because I don't know, I think when you have it fully sealed with a custom mold, it does make a pretty significant uh, difference in your listening experience. So when I was trying these out at Johnny's shop, I just was like, oh, you know, they sound better, but it wasn't that big of a difference. But then now that I have two sets of customs, one that are RSM quad drivers, and now these ones, it's a significant difference. And I think whatever the price difference is from these Spires to the RSM quad drivers, I do think it's worth the extra money for these. So these are a very important tool for my broadcast mix setup uh, because I need to, to hear everything going on. And it also has to be very um, isolated for me to, to not be dealing with any room noise bleeding into my mix. And I've seen this question time and time again as I'm posting these videos, people are like, Jake, how are you mixing when you're in the same room? Like, we don't have reference monitors. Of course we don't, because we, we got live uh, sound coming through here, through the PA. Uh, but I have good custom in-ears that really can isolate the sound. And yeah, we have some over-the-ear headphones, not ideal. Um, and then we might explore some options of maybe getting some really high quality universal fit in-ear monitors that then our volunteers could switch out the earbuds. Um, and then if volunteers really love this, you know, and, and really want to own this role, maybe they'd, they'd consider investing into their own custom fit in-ear someday. But for now, we're going to keep this workstation here. We're not using like reference monitors. We're just going to be using reference headphones, ideally custom fit headphones. Um, and it's really been doing the job pretty darn well. And I actually feel like these Spire 6 headphones are definitely allowing me, whatever I'm mixing, I can hear a ton more um, and can dial that in even better. Okay, the final tool I want to highlight 
is the Elgato Stream Deck. So you guys saw in a previous video, we're putting a ton of Stream Decks at all of our workstations. It is such an amazing tool. And especially for these quick cues that need to happen throughout a service on the fly. Um, so we have this Stream Deck set up to be able to um, mute and unmute different, just basically mute groups that we have within this template. Now that we've been mixing with this setup here for a few months, I kind of, I know all the, the quick cues and transitions we have to do. And again, it's like when you're working with a DAW, it's kind of a pain to like point your cursor and click on things. Like it, you gotta be, you gotta get, get used to getting fast at that. Sure, you could do some keyboard commands, but sometimes you kind of run into doubt of like, oh shoot, w which channel did I put to this keyboard on my keyboard? Um, but that's one way you could do it. Um, I really wanted a way to have you know, a hardware um, UI that had things clearly labeled that were easy to, to quickly access to, to turn things on or off, whether it's our pastor mics, our, all of our vocal mics, our crowd mics, and our band group. So that's what I have set up right here, and Aaron set this up for me. So you'll see we've got some great labels here. Um, this is kind of just at the beginning of probably what this will look like, um, but this, these are really basically what we need um, for, for having some great cues throughout the service. So the Stream Deck is setting MIDI commands through the native Stream Deck app, and they recently, Aaron told me they just recently came out with a, a MIDI plugin in the app that makes this possible. So far, it seems to be working great. Um, so whenever I you know, go ahead and wanna unmute or unmute something, um, it also gives me the visual feedback of whether or not that thing is muted or unmuted. Um, so Aaron basically made two different icons for each of these um, channels on the Stream Deck. So when it is unmuted, it's, it's white and it says the name of the channel and then it turns red with a line across it uh, if it's muted. So it's just a really simple way, again, for myself or volunteers when we're mixing to be able to quickly go, okay, let's mute or unmute all vocal mics, the crowd mics, the band mics, our pastor's mics, and then we got a couple like individual handheld mics we use for announcements or other MCs during the service. So I'm a really big fan of the, just the uh, having something physical that we can actually touch and quickly cue things with, and then also the, the visual feedback that it gives. Um, it's gonna just reduce, I think, the amount of errors that we could have with muting and unmuting things for our broadcast. So that's it, we covered quite a bit in this video, but those are my five favorite new accessories we've been using for our Broadcast Mix workstation. I wanna invite you to check out Broadcast Mix Mastery and all of our other courses down below uh, in the description of this video. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button, share it with your friends in worship ministry, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.